Okay, so welcome back to our Knowledge Management 101. And this time we're going to talk about the Knowledge Management Models. Pasadahan lang natin itong KM Models na ito. Okay, so I just based this from the presentation of Graham Durant Law on the Knowledge Management Models or Models of Knowledge. Okay, so from the University of Canberra. So model, model is an intellectual construct in artifact form that provides an abstract, highly formalized, often visual yet simplified representation of a phenomenon in its interactions, okay? So models can be a mathematical model, descriptive models, and graphical models. So this can be broadly classified into two categories, descriptive and prescriptive. The descriptive method um, attempts to characterize the nature of KM phenomena, whereas prescriptive models describe methodologies to follow in conducting knowledge management. That's according to Hausa Paul and Joshi 1999. Okay, so let's go. Let's move on. Okay, uh, I'll just we'll just take a look at the six models. So, maraming models ng KM actually you can read. I have some uh, references. Uh, to, to, to give to you. So you can just check on the other models, but, but these are the common models used in some organizations. Okay, first is we have a, a Kof's Pyramid to Wisdom. If you remember the DIKW Pyramid. So this is the DIKW Pyramid. So it represents the relationship between data, information, knowledge, understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. So each building block is a step toward a higher level. First come data, then information. Next is knowledge, and finally comes wisdom. So each step answers different questions about the initial data and adds value to it. The more we enrich our data with meaning and context, the more knowledge and insights we get out of it so we can take better informed data based decisions. Okay, so yon, that's according to a, a cost, the, the DIKW pyramid. Next is we have the six knows. Okay, so this is the know how. Knowledge is know how, know where, know when, know what, know why, and know who. So the six knows is Von Krog and Ross model of organizational epistemology, 1995. This is the first model that precisely differentiates between individual knowledge and social knowledge, okay? This model analyzes the aspects why and how the knowledge gets to the workers of the company, okay? And why and why the knowledge arrives at the organization. Okay? And what does knowledge mean for the workers as well as the organizations? And what are the barriers of organizational knowledge management? So, why and how, and what, who, and when, and where, okay? Yeah, and the six notes by Krog, by Krog and Ross. Okay. You can read further on this. Pasadahan lang natin itong mga models. Next is the Nonaka's Sessi Spiral Model. So this is the common, the first widely adopted KM model, okay? This model identifies four kinds of knowledge conversion that drive knowledge creation. So in here, if you can see, that is why SESI, because there is socialization, externalization, combination, and internalization. So spiral, ito rin ay sinasabing spiral kasi palabas. Okay, let's go back a bit. Organizational knowledge is created by the interactions among these four conversions, conversion processes and through transfer from tacit to explicit knowledge from individual to group to organization. Okay, so socialization, sharing, and creating tacit knowledge through direct experience. So the socialization composed of communities of practice, trades, association, okay, after actions, Reviews and mentoring. Okay, mapasok dyan ang mentoring. And then, externalization. 
making it into a tacit, um, explicit knowledge. Articulating tacit knowledge through dialogue and reflection. Okay. So learning reports, case studies, interviews, knowledge maps. Okay. And then um, combination, systematizing, systemizing and applying explicit knowledge and information. So it's a combination. So examples of these are repositories, training and prior art searches. Okay. And then internalization, learning and acquiring new tacit knowledge and practice. So mentoring, peers, peer assist and internships. So yun yun yung um, SESI model. Next is we have Mac Elroy's model. So ito naman, Models, uh, Mac Elroy model divides the knowledge creation process okay, into two big process. So in here, if you can see the model, we have knowledge production and knowledge integration. So knowledge production is the process where knowledge, where new organizational knowledge is created and is synonymous to organizational learning. Okay, so individual and group learning, and then it comes knowledge brain formulation, and then you got an information acquisition, and then knowledge brain evaluation. Okay. And then I'm saying ito matagal, pero pasadahan lang natin. Okay. While knowledge integration, okay, it is formed by some activities that allow the knowledge sharing and distribution. Knowledge integration is formed by some activities that allow the knowledge sharing and distribution. Okay, so knowledge sharing, broadcasting, searching, distribution is teaching and sharing, right? Okay. The models, the model introduces two concepts, namely supply side and demand side. Supply side side includes practice that are practices that are designed to enhance the supply of existing knowledge to workers in an enterprise. The demand side focuses on enhancing an organization's capacity to satisfy its demand for new knowledge. Yun yung sinasabi ni Mark Elroy's model. Next is the Fritz model. Okay. So Fritz model, uh, this is uh, Fritz model in 2003. This model divided the knowledge management maturity assessment into five. Okay five levels. So if you can see here, level one is knowledge chaotic, level two is knowledge aware, and level three is knowledge focus, and then knowledge, level four, knowledge manage, and level five, knowledge centric. Okay, so when we're saying in level one, knowledge chaotic suggests that organizations at this level are in the process of understanding and implementation of pride free framework for knowledge management which includes um, knowledge management vision and other km indices level two knowledge aware advocating and adopting departmental key and visions and goals so at this level are a step the are a, a step higher than those of knowledge chaotic so also to understand and implement free framework to, for knowledge management advocating and adopting departmental knowledge, management vision, and goals. Okay. So level three, this is knowledge focus. So start focusing on new activities. Indicates organizations should have covered the implementation aspects as in the lower two levels and start focusing on five new activities, namely, so here, meron siya identify na process engineering, providing initial knowledge, management infrastructure, and then, support early adopters and knowledge community, and then monitor and report on management indices and, manage, and knowledge management in budgets. Okay. And level four, okay, so sa level four, may embed KM in performance reviews and in business plans. Okay. And then in level five, institutionalize initiatives and evaluate intellectual assets. The level five is the highest level is the highest of all knowledge management implementation maturity level based on Fritz model. So, yeah, so parang maturity level ito level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. Yeah. 
Next is actually that is number six. And now I just adapted here the, the, the framework of the DSWD also. So I could share where I am involved in the process. So basically, this is the model. So input process output outcome. Ganun lang din parang IPOP. Okay. And then, uh, yan nga. So here, if you, if you see, okay, I am the DSW division, DSW division 23. Okay, so my participation in the department is actually under the process. Okay. So coming from this input, we from the Learning Resource Center, our involvement is on knowledge production. So we, we contribute through the documentation of the good practices of, from the different programs of the department, okay, including the policies, okay, memorandums, yeah, we store them so that um, it will help in the knowledge production, okay, through the policies, this can also be sources of information as we validate the, the, the knowledge claims from the ground, okay, if, if these are in line really with the memorandums and policies of the department. So if these are validated, it will become part of the organizational knowledge, okay? And it will be integrated. If there are findings and these are validated as good practices or success stories, okay? It will be stored in our learning resource center. Okay? And then it will come part of the knowledge product again. So it will help in the creation of new, new knowledge products, okay? So this will be continuously shared. So our output at least would have come up with a dynamic social protection and related knowledge products okay, that will help our stakeholders and partners and even the department as well in creating and improving other programs and services. Okay, ayan, yun lang naman. I'm just simplifying and just sharing where is my participation as far as the learning resource center or the library is concerned in knowledge management. By the way, the library is only one component of KM. We serve as an active repository and um, learning venue, venue of our individual, uh, internal and external part. All right, so model problems. So what are the common models? Usually the problem with these models. So at the risk of oversimplification, Generic knowledge models typically focus on KM from knowledge life cycle perspective. So these models are important in enriching our understanding on the essentials of KM activities, okay? Yet do not provide an integrate, integrative perspective for actual KM implementation. Sometimes it varies according to the implementation, okay? And th there are a lot of factors that affect really kahit plinano mo yan, no? But there's at the middle of the implementation, it varies accordingly because there are factors that really affect the implementation. So you know, man, we, we, we always keep on, on improving. Okay. Now, what's the importance? The so knowledge management project failure is a reality that both practitioners and researchers have to be with. Okay. 84% 80, of knowledge management initiatives are have failed actually. Implementing a knowledge management initiative has a significant cost in time and resources. Okay? The complete initiative often costs several million dollars. Actually, um, our journey, the journey of KM is not actually that easy. It will really took um, years until such time that you could really feel the, the impact. Okay? So very important is the sustainability and consistency in doing the practice. So for more models, okay, you can actually search and watch them on the YouTube channels. Marami jaan. So we're just trying to lay down or or have a random or rundown of the uh, models used by organizations. Okay. 